to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We welcome you today to our study of the peace of God. Peace is such an amazing thing in the Christian's life. And we want you to think today about, about that peace. Do you have that peace in your life? Do you have, do we have the peace of God which every Christian ought to have? We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. Let's think about the idea of the peace of God. When we talk about peace, we're talking about a sense of tranquility, a, a sense of calm in your life, the absence of chaos and drama and problems, just an, an even keel in your life. Is kind of what we're talking about. So today we're going to answer, ask and answer from the Word of God, three questions. In, the, in these two lessons, we're going to answer three questions as it relates to the peace of God. First, what is that peace of God? Where does it come from? What is it? Why do I need that? Why do I want that in my life? Secondly, we're going to ask, how do I get that peace? How's that peace obtained? in my life? And then a third very important question, how do I keep the peace of God in my life? And so let's begin by thinking about what is this peace of God? Well, initially we want to realize that God is the author of peace. There is no peace without God and all peace comes from the true source of peace, God himself. Listen to, uh, listen to what the Bible says. Notice in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 14, verse number 33. As we think about God being the author and the source of peace, the Apostle Paul said this to the church in Corinth. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. God's not the source of chaos and drama and toxicity and confusion. God is the author of peace. What's that mean? 
The author is someone who originates that, someone who creates that idea, someone who creates that, that way of life. All peace comes from God because God's the source of peace. There is not chaos. There is not drama. There's not confusion and turmoil in heaven around the throne of God. There's the absolute peace that God gives us. And so when we think about what is this peace, I want you to think about God being the source of that. And I've, I've got God and his word in my life. I'm going to have true peace. And so when we think about God being the, the source of peace, we can equate that with who God himself is. Listen to this verse. Uh, Romans chapter 15, verse number 53 reminds us that the source of peace is Almighty God. Listen to how God's described. As Paul concludes, begins to conclude, his letter to the churches of Christ in Rome, Paul says, Now the God of peace be with you all. Isn't that a beautiful picture of God? He is the Almighty God of peace. Listen to Romans 16 verse 20, what he says a little later in that book. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The description that is used of the character and nature of God in the Bible is he's the God of peace. He's the source of it. It emanates from his throne. If your life and my life, if we're going to have true peace, we must have God in our lives. But friend, let's put a second aspect to peace when we think about what it is, and that is this. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. It comes from the throne of God, and it descends through Jesus Christ, who is described in the Scripture as the, the, the Prince, the King of Peace, as it were. Listen to Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. For unto us... A child is born. This is all prophecy about Jesus. Unto us, Isaiah says, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Listen to this. Prince of Peace. Where does peace come from? Friend, listen carefully. Listen very carefully because this is the practical side of what we're talking about. If I want peace, I must have God and I must have Jesus Christ in my life. And friend, the flip side of that is this. If I'm not in Christ, if I don't have God, if I'm not living according to the, the principles and the teachings of God and Christ, I can't really have peace. True peace is found in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so if I want that peace, I've got to bring my life in line with theirs and live according to the principles of God. And friend, out in the world where God is not, in a world of sin, in a world of, you know, when you look at the world, you watch the news, you see all the problems that, that the devil and, and all the evil is out there is creating. You can see the absence of peace because of the fact that God and Christ are not there. You want to live a life of conflict and drama and chaos and confusion? Well, friend, that's the life of sin and the world where the devil's in charge of that. If you want peace, you've got to have God and Christ in your life every day. But as we think about this idea of peace and, and what it is, peace isn't something that, that just kind of happens. In the Bible, peace must be made. And so when we talk about what is peace, peace is something that has to be made. Notice in your Bible, James chapter 3, verse number 18. As James talks about heavenly wisdom versus earthly wisdom and, and really living a life that is filled by God, he says this, Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, listen now, by those who make peace. Peace doesn't just happen. Now, we can talk about peace, we can sing about it, we can, we can promote that idea as much as we want, but until we do something, Peace 
doesn't occur. And so peace has to be made. And of course, that's made by the blood of Jesus Christ and his giving himself on the cross to bring peace between God and man. That there, there is always something that, that instigates, that causes, that makes peace available. And in the Bible, Jesus' blood brings peace between God and man. Ephesians 2, verses 14 and 15, and Colossians 2, verses 14 and 15. But then consider this. Not only is peace made, but there is a way that leads to peace. The Bible describes a way of peace. Listen to Luke chapter 1. And in the, in the context of Luke chapter 1, we have the announcement of Jesus' birth. We have all the promises and prophecies that are told there to Mary and the people of that day. And on the heels of all that hope, here's what is said about Jesus coming into the world. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. And listen to this beautiful phrase. To guide our feet in the way of peace. Well, friend, what is that way of peace. It's the way of Jesus. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the good news that God sent his son into the world to die for sinful man, that we can be in Christ, have his blood applied to our spirit, be cleansed of sin, and be in a right relationship with God. And so friend, it's not, we can talk a lot about peace, but until we actually realize that's made and there's a way you've got to go down to get peace and there are steps you've got to do to achieve that, that peace cannot be made in any way. Now, friend, also along those lines, when we talk about defining peace, let's realize that Jesus Christ himself, more than anybody in the world, he talked about and he preached peace. Uh, a couple of verses that I think of that remind us of the message of Jesus and what he said being a message of peace. Consider with me Ephesians 2, verse number 17 in your Bible. The Bible says of Jesus, And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to all those who were near. What does it mean Jesus came and preached peace? Well, it means this, the gospel, his message, his, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, him being king of kings and Lord of lords, and him reuniting God and man through his death. The gospel is peace. It is that, that message that Jesus preached. Listen to Acts 10 verse 36. Peter says to Cornelius and his household, who are now receiving the gospel, the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Friend, listen carefully to me. Again, the practical aspect of what we're talking about. Until a person has Jesus Christ and they, the embodiment of his teaching, his message, and his life in their life, there can be no peace. The absence of peace is naturally the absence of Christ in one's life. Being filled with peace then would be being filled with Christ and his teaching in your life. And so what is this peace? It's, it's Jesus. It's God. It's the, it's the message in the way of Jesus Christ that he made available through each and every one of us. And so we encourage you to think about Christ in your life and the hope and joy that that peace and that message brings to your life in every way. My friend, let's also notice this, and it goes without saying really, but we want to emphasize this idea. Christianity, the whole embodiment of Christianity, its doctrine, its teaching, its life, its message of hope in Jesus, the Bible describes that, Christianity as the way of peace. I want you to notice this beautiful verse. As Paul thinks about the gospel in the book of Romans, that gospel which 
all the world needs. That gospel which the Gentiles need in chapter 1. That gospel which the Jews need in chapter 2. That gospel that all people need in Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen to what he says about, about Christianity in Romans 3 verse 17. And the way of peace they have not known. What, what is that way of peace? It is Christianity. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. They referred to the, the, the critics of Christianity, referred to it throughout the book of Acts as the way. And friend, it is the way. The only way to be reunited with God. And so when we think about Christianity, how are we going to have, listen to me now. How are we going to have peace? How am I going to have peace in my life? The only way is through Christianity. How are we going to have peace in our, in our country where it looks like there's a lot of problems and a lot of conflict and a, a lot of disagreements on every level? How can we have peace in a world that often feeds off of conflict and drama? Christianity is the way of peace. And sadly, like Paul said, the way of peace many people have not known. But then also realize as we think about this idea of peace, the Bible teaches us that the gospel, the good news, is the core. It is the heart and core of peace with Almighty God. Listen to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 16. As Paul talks to Christians in Ephesus, about preparing uh, their heart and their life to ward off, to defend themselves against Satan, to put on the whole armor of God, to do battle spiritually against the spiritual host of wickedness. He then says this in Ephesians 6 verse 17, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, when we talk about the gospel at its heart and core, we're talking about the fact that Jesus was died, that he was buried, and that according to the scriptures, he rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 3. That good news, that Christ was willing to die in my stead. Friend, that's the heart and core of the gospel. And when we shot our feet with the gospel of peace, when, our, when everywhere our steps go, when the gospel of peace is the shoes that we wear and everywhere we go, we walk that walk, we use those shoes, we, 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 we put them in front of us in every way. Friend, that's where real peace comes in your life. If you wanna, if you wanna have peace, if you wanna live a life that has that, that sense of calm, no matter what happens, if you want the absence of the drama and the chaos and the toxicity and, and, and confusion that's in the world, put the gospel in your life. Put Jesus in your life. Put God in your life. And that's where you begin to receive a real peace. And friend, it is this, it is this message of the gospel that is the binding agent of peace. It is what binds peace to God and to man in their relationship. I want you to listen to the words of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. As Paul encourages Christians to have unity, in the book of Ephesians he says these words, that they need to be endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, listen to this now, in the bond of peace. You know, I've used some agents that were pretty good binding agents, and I've used some that, that weren't very good binding agents. A binding agent will bring two things together. It'll put them tightly together, so tightly most of the time, that you can't tell they're not one. A well, friend, sin has separated us from God. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. How can we be bound? How can we be one with God again? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Here's the bond. In the bond 
of peace. If we want to be bound to God in a life of peace, then friend, that must be through the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in every way. We must strive to live according to his will. And friend, here's the benefit of that. As we talk about what peace is, please understand, peace is the absence of conflict. The Bible describes peace as that absence of conflict in your life. Listen to Matthew chapter 10, verse number 34. When we talk about that idea of absence of conflict, Jesus said, do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And so as we think about about this idea of peace and the peace of God and, and the things that it is, peace is the absence of conflict. And Jesus came to bring that peace. He came to, you know, a lot of people have this mindset that it is uh, going to be difficult and challenging as a Christian. Jesus came to bring peace to those who would follow him. That doesn't mean there won't be problems and difficulties and, and challenges along the way. Jesus came to bring that peace to those who would follow him. And, and as we think about the absence of conflict, when I live according to the will of God, there may, be, there may be people of the world who try to bring that into my heart and life. There may be people of the world who try to break down that. But for the child of God, even though there may be a sword and challenges occasionally, I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What else is peace? Peace is that state of absolute calm in your life. Listen to Mark chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 39. Then he arose, Jesus did, and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Listen to this. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Of course, you're reminded of what that story is. Jesus is in the boat with the disciples out in the Sea of Galilee, and a great windstorm arises. Jesus is asleep in the stern. The water is filling up the boats. They, they wake him up, and they say to Jesus, uh, Lord, do you not care that we're about to perish? The, the boat's taking on water. We're in the middle of the sea. Looks like we're about to drown. Is that what you want to happen? Don't, don't you care that's going to happen? Jesus woke up from that sleep, said, Peace be still. And immediately, that tumultuous, turbulent, white-capping sea became like a sea of glass. What was the whole lesson that Jesus was, Jesus is trying to get across to his disciples? Well, no doubt, Christ must have in mind that in the future, there are going to be waves. There are going, there's going to be some turbulence that tries to come into their life. That there are going to be problems that others try to force upon them and challenges that they've got to face. But if you remember, Jesus is at the helm. If you remember, Jesus is still in control. You can have that state of absolute calm, regardless of what situation one finds himself in, regardless of the difficulty or the problem. If we've got God in our life, if we have that peace of God in our life, then friend, we can have that sense of calm no matter what the storm may be. And so peace is a state of absolute calm in the Christian's life. Now friend, as you think about this idea of what peace is, as we consider the, the peace of God today, that, that peace which surpasses all understanding that will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, Friend, we want to ask you today, does your life have that peace? Do you have God in your life? Is the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? He is Lord. For the Bible says in Acts 2 verse 36, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Jesus is the Lord. His, his message, his gospel is the way peace is made. It was made at the cross of Jesus Christ. Peace was brought to man through his blood and through his death on Calvary. And so my friend, maybe your life, maybe you're, maybe you're looking at your life today and you're thinking, 
I don't have that. I've got all these problems. I've got all these issues. I've got all this confusion and chaos and, and difficulty, and my life is a mess. My life is reminiscent of the Sea of Galilee when Jesus' disciples said, Lord, don't you care that we're about to drown? That's what my life looks like, maybe. Friend, have you let Jesus be the master of your life? Have you, have, are you, are you a, first of all, are you a child of God? Have you given that life over to God to let him work in your life to calm all that down? Remember, the only way you can get peace is it's got to be made. And it's made when I bring Christ into my life. And so are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Paul said in Romans 6, 17, God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, there's a life of conflict. Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you're delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Have you obeyed the message of Jesus? Meaning this, do you believe he is the son of God? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm he, you'll surely die in your sins. Ha have you acknowledged him as Lord and Savior? With the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Have you turned from that life of conflict and heartache in repentance? Our Lord said, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. And friend, have you had every sin washed away in the blood of Jesus? On the day of Pentecost, Peter told those who believed in Jesus in Acts 2, verse 38, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. If you've never obeyed the gospel, we encourage you today to bring God and his message and that peace into your life. And I promise you, you can have peace that passes all understanding. Join us next time as we'll think more about the peace of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.